So, welcome back to the class on textile finishing. Let's see what did we do till last time. Last time we were talking about some of the definitions of waterproofing, water repellency and waterproof breathables and we tried to understand what and how they are different from each other. And then we took up little more discussion on waterproof fabrics or waterproof finish and we did discuss chemistry of some of the uh, chemicals which can be used as waterproofing agents and some of these obviously were coated, can be coated on the textiles to get that effect. And so how do we coat? Those are some of the methods that we talked about which included for example knife on air or knife on roller type of methods. After coating you could obviously dry them, cure them depending upon what chemicals are there along with it. And then of course how do we evaluate a waterproof fabric? Hydrostatic test is what can be used. You increase the pressure so that the water wants to penetrate through this fabric and whenever about three drops of water are visible on the surface, we say that is the pressure it can withstand. So, that is a hydrostatic pressure test. Today, uh, we go further and talk, talk about repellency, water repellency. You want to make a water repellent fabric, what kind of a thing that you should do. So, as against the waterproof fabrics, what are the expectations that we have from water repellent fabrics? One of course is that they should repel water as much as possible. So that is an expectation as the name suggests, they, these fabrics after finishing should repel water, that is one. We also expect that the air permeability should not be decreased too much. In waterproof fabric, we almost said the air cannot pass through. The standard tests for checking the permeability of the air would fail or would demonstrate or would say that air permeability is almost zero. But in water repellent fabrics, we are only interested in repellency and not you know, decrease the permeability of air. Whether it will decrease or not will depend on what you do to it. But our expectation is that the air permeability will not decrease. Because air permeability has something to do with comfort. The kind of garments that we are wearing, for example, you never feel uncomfortable. In the day to day work that we do, we the body is continuously releasing heat and which if is taken by the atm atmosphere, then we feel comfortable. That is our physiological phenomena. And body also continuously loses moisture through perspiration. And as long as this perspiration is evaporated, we feel comfortable. Now just think or remember any time you have been wearing a raincoat and what is a raincoat? A raincoat is a waterproof fabric, right? A raincoat is a waterproof fabric. So have you, do you remember whenever you were wearing a raincoat in a rainy season and let us say you had to wear it for more than 15, 20 minutes, half an hour or so. Did you perspire inside? Did you feel that you are actually more wet inside, not because of the rain, but because of the sweat itself? Did you experience or not? You never experienced or some of you must have experienced that when you have a raincoat, the standard commercial raincoat, 
which has textile on outside and a rubber latex coating inside or sometimes you may have seen people wearing almost plastic sheets, the raincoats just made of plastic sheets. So, what happens you know they obviously protect you from the rain immediately, but if you keep wearing them for a longer period then the comfort level is not very high because the moisture that the body is uh, releasing is not going to the atmosphere, it is getting condensed and becoming a perspiration, you, your fabrics can get wet and that is obviously not a very comfortable situation. So, when we talk about air permeability and it should be permeable to air, we also mean the air as well as any vapor form of water should also just go out and if that happens the comfort level becomes high. So, we want actually our textiles that we wear and I am not talking about the tent, all right. I am talking about the fabrics which you wear close to your body, the microclimate around the body should be such that you feel dry all the time, all right. That is the importance of the air permeability and therefore, the water repellent fabric as a garment may be a better idea if let us say it is a very light drizzle you just walk through and suppose you just go and you shake your fabric and everything just falls off then you could be happy right. So, that is something about the air permeability all right. Now, in the water repellent fabrics do we expect some resistance to penetration of water? Do we expect the water penetration should be resisted? Well, these are contradictory requirements, they are contradictory requirements because to make sure that a fabric becomes what behaves like a waterproof fabric you are you have given a layer of a film which has been coated applied on the textiles and therefore all interstices may have been closed and therefore transfer of air or vapor from one side to the other side is going to be very difficult so actually in water repellent fabrics we do not expect we don't expect that it should increase water penetration resistance. Is that clear? So, we are interested in water repellency. And so, what do we do? Modify what? Modify the textile, the fabric. But obviously, we should modify in a way which is different from what we did for waterproofing. So, one important thing which we must remember that water repellency is going to be essentially a surface finish. So, what are we going to modify? Surface, we are going to modify surface. So, that is one difference which you must remember and therefore, we would be happy that the surface changes, but we are not blocking the pores or of the fabric or the interstices between the yarns and so that the water vapor which may be inside getting generated because of our physiological activity that we have and there is a phenomena, the physical activity, the physiological phenomena is that moisture will come out and that must be evaporated, must be taken away from the body surface and that can happen if we are looking at only modifying surface of fibers, surface of 
yarns or fabrics, but not blocking the interstices. Which also means that we are wanting, we wanting to do what? Change the wetting characteristic of a fabric, right? In some sense, we can say that we are going to be playing with surface energy of textile fibers, yarns and fabric. We will keep on explaining this as we move further. So, recall your early days of learning a bit of physics. So, what do we have? So, we have surface energy which is energy per unit area okay which is can be expressed as joules per meter square all right that's something which we remember and then this is in a way can be expressed as newton meter per meter square which is obviously can be expressed as newton meter newton per meter and then if we see this this is nothing but force per unit length so force per unit length is therefore nothing but surface tension so sometime when somebody says well i am talking about surface energy modifications Sometimes they refer it to surface tension. So, they can be terms which are equivalent, but this surface energy is per unit area and surface tension is per unit length, okay? the force per unit length. That is energy per unit area, which becomes force per unit length. Now, this will happen and so whenever somebody says, well, surface tension of this particular thing is this much in surface tension of uh, a solid surface is this much. So, one should not get confused because one is liquid, the other is solid and, and there is an interface. So, every time we talk about surface tension, it means actually an interface, tension between some interface. If we talk about surface energy, that also is between some interface. So, without interface, there is no energy issue. So, now for water repellent finishing, what do we want to check and do? So, what is wetting? What is wetting? I mean, do we have a situation where one is a wet, wetting or wetting, wettable surface that is a non-wettable surface? Are these kind of things that we are looking at? What exactly happens? Of course, this is a surface property and we believe that is a surface property, but what is for wetting, we like to see what is the response of a solid surface to a liquid. When we put a liquid on a solid surface, what is the response? Is the response one way or the other or there are many kind of responses that you can actually see? that might just therefore say wetting otherwise appear to be a simple thing like you put a liquid and you see the liquid has wetted the surface. So, we say it is a wetting, but we may be able to talk about wetting in little more uh, detail in, and differentiate be, between different conditions where the wetting would take place. So, therefore, when we talk about definition of wetting, uh, we need it because we do not know the response of a surface. So, based on the response of a surface, we may like to say define the wetting. All right. So, there is something called a positive wetting. Now, what is the response? So, there is a surface, we put a drop of liquid <coughs> on the surface and we try to see what is the response. A positive wetting means there is wetting, all right? There is wetting, and let's say this is the textile surface, actually any surface, 
and you put a drop of water and you see some contact angle. If the contact angle theta is less than 90 degrees, then by definition is called positive wetting, all right. So, positive wetting, all right. So, if there is a positive wetting in a scale, on a scale there could be negative wetting, all right, and there can be zero wetting. For example, if, if you say, well, this is the zero point and this is positive wetting side uh, uh, zero and this is negative, all right, this could be one of the ways of defining. So, as far as the positive wetting is concerned, this is the situation, acute angle, the contact angle is acute, all right. Let us go further, zero wetting, like we just said before, what is a zero wetting? So, for zero wetting, this is surface and you put a drop and if the contact angle is equal to ninety degrees, and if the contact angle is ninety degrees, then we consider zero wetting. Okay, and then we talk about negative wetting. So negative wetting is when the contact angle is more than 90 degrees. So, if contact angle is an obtuse angle, then it is, then it is called negative wetting. Right. So, is there a significance of zero wetting? Well, actually, not really so much, but there can be a condition where it is from the point of view of neither positive nor negative, so where it is. So, it is 90 degrees, that is a zero wetting. Positive wetting is acute angle, contact angle, and negative is the obtuse contact angle. That is one interesting. Thing. Then what else? Spreading. Spreading is a situation when you put a drop of water on a surface within no time it just gets absorbed. It is a very hydrophilic surface and you put a drop of water you just do not see, you are not able to measure the contact angle at all, you cannot measure the contact angle. You put a drop of water and you see immediately it spreads, so you cannot measure. So, this is in a way a non-equilibrium condition. If you see, if you see a drop actually and you can measure a contact angle, then this is an equilibrium position at least for whatever little time. Only then you can measure the contact angle, but in the case of spreading, 
it's a null equilibrium condition and the moment you put drop of water just spreads and keeps on spreading till anything which can be spread is left out right so it's a dynamic situation then if this is so then there must be something else yeah no wetting remember we should not confuse no wetting with zero wetting zero wetting is what what when theta is equal to 90 degrees zero wetting is on the other hand where we expect the contact angle to be equal to 180 degrees that just a spherical layer with a point contact its condition is very difficult to obtain in practical life for various repellency requirements we may be very happy with 120 130 140 degrees very very happy about that getting 180 is practically a difficult situation therefore there are two special conditions that we're talking about here is spreading which will be non equilibrium condition it will always happen you will not be able to define any contact angle there you know you will not call it a zero contact angle is very very difficult because it's not steady at all other is a no wetting condition where theta is very high 180 degrees this is the maximum possible but this may not actually happen right nevertheless so we have some definitions so what is important is when you say wetting it means many things and not just one thing or other than one thing right so there are many things it can it can mean keep that in mind so before let's say we go further and learn some theory why not we check up something uh, which might help to understand some of the thing that we're talking about uh let's say here here is a sheet of paper okay a sheet of paper has got two sides so we we'll, let's say look at one side and i let's say drop put a drop of water on the sheet let's see how does it look do you see something can you see the drop interesting you can see the drop therefore in such a case there is some wetting but you can still see the drop and what will be interesting interesting could be that you actually if you roll off maybe they roll off they're gone they've gone so this surface in some sense is repelling water it is repelling not exactly the way you would have like say so the other surface the other surface of this particular sheet probably will behave differently if we see you see it leaves a mark can you see some mark here see that white mark so it it is rolling but it is also still attractive to the surface you see some of these marks if it was a real repellent surface it would just roll let me see if you can see 
the other surface does it roll. See that the water rolls off. If it rolls off, it means the attraction is less to the surface. Now, let us see some of the textiles. This is a fabric which is cotton fabric. Okay, got creases, we know got creases, cotton fabric does not matter, but today we are not really bothered about the crease recovery. Hmm? We want to see something else. Okay, uh, yeah, I want to do a drop. Can you see something? Can you see the drop here? But you see some spread here. Can you see some spreading in this area? You see the spreading? You again see the spreading here. So, this fabric instead of keeping the drop alive, it just spreads and that is an example of a fabric which is a normal fabric. So, what do we do? Let us say we give some treatment. If you give some treatment and then we see has the behavior changed? Can you see the drop now? Is it possible to see the drop? You saw the drop. Can you see the drop? But after some time, this drop also gets absorbed, but you see the drop here. The drop is there, drop is there, but it also gets absorbed with time. In fact, if you touch the other side, from the other side also it is wet. So, it may be something going towards repelling, but not necessarily whatever we want, but we can keep changing this condition. We change the condition more and more, we may get more and more different response to putting a drop. This, do you see something? If we zoom a little bit, maybe we can see something. All right. Okay. You see some drops. And if we roll it, it just keeps going falling down from the fabric. That means from the fabric, I have been able to push the water down as droplets. And so, this surface of this fabric was obviously different than the surface of the, let us say, untreated fabric. Therefore, by changing the surfaces, you can create situations. This is the original polymer sheet surface, which is still has got a lot of drops because it is not absorbing it. In such situations, what we call as some wetting is taking place. So, just a bit of an exercise uh, to remember. You can do those kinds of things wherever you are in, at home and check which fabric uh, wets more, which fabric wets less and so on and so forth. And there are, uh, uh, sometimes you can, you have utensils which are, uh, for example, Teflon coated and you might just see how they repel and how the liquid actually just keeps rolling over the surfaces. So, based on what is our requirement, we can change the surfaces. So, let us now get back to uh, what we normally do, that is the theory part of it. So, there is one interesting equation, very simple and effective equation which talks about the repellency and energies.
Okay. So, what is this equation about? Let us see. This equation talks about interfaces, that is one important thing you must understand. There is nothing called energy or a tension. If you talk about surface tension, so what is this tension? In the case of liquids, we talk about surface tension, which we have already said this energy is equal to surface tension, therefore, we can represent everything almost in the same term. Why is the tension? And where is the tension? You remember in the case of liquid, for example, you see the meniscus in water and air. So, the tension is here and not here, not here, is that? Here for example, every molecule is attracted to the other molecule which is water, water to water, everything for example is satisfied. The moment it comes here, the molecule is getting attracted to the water but does not know what to do here. Maybe this want, what molecule does not want to go there but it has to be and therefore, there is a tension. Similarly, therefore, this kind of a disbalance and therefore, so if you have a tension that means there is an interface. And what is the interface here? Air and liquid, air or water interface. So, this tension is at the interface, not here. If there is an interface between the glass wall, let us say of a beaker and the water, yes, there is an interface. So, there will be some interface here and behavior will be different. For example, if this surface was glass versus let us say Teflon, this interface is different. Water is the same, but this the solid different. So, you can have a solid and a liquid interface. Okay, solid liquid. So, this is what we are talking here that there is an interface. For example, if there was a solid surface here and you put a drop, you put a drop of let us say a liquid, it takes up a shape and we defined something called a contact angle. Now, if let us say in this case the contact angle happens to be acute. So, these forces are acting let us say at this point trying to balance this shape, right? the shape is being balanced. How? This force is pulling this thing, obviously we have taken a cross section, otherwise it is a whole drop, it could be surface for the circumference of the drop everywhere this pull is there. So, you can appreciate so something is pulling in this direction, something is pulling this part in inside and the other component which is the thing which is defined. So, how do we define? We said either surface energy, let us say S V is solid and vapor. So, solid vapor interface okay. and gamma L V is liquid vapor interface energy. And gamma L s or sometime S l, it does not matter whatever you want to write is a liquid solid. interface. So, all these interfaces obviously are feeling, experiencing some amount of tension, uh, more or less, it depends. Now, if we say the balancing, so this the gamma 
between solid vapor interface which is the called the gamma SV is equal to the gamma LS which is pulling on this side but also a component of this which is LV cos theta. So, there is a balance. If you change the balance, the shape of this drop will change, right. Remember this Young and Dupre equation is valid in equilibrium conditions. So, there is a balance of forces. If this is not valid, for example, in a spreading case which is non equilibrium condition ok. So, that is one interesting thing which you may like to remember. So, let us ask some questions. So, as a principle we want more wetting you see in a textile situation you can have you want more wetting. Where do you want more wetting? When do you want more wetting? Lay, I want to dye, I want to apply a chemical from aqua solution. So, what do we do? We add a wetting agent and what does a wetting agent do? It reduces the surface tension of liquid. So, if you reduce the surface tension of a liquid means you are reducing this. If you reduce this, its component also will get reduced, all right. Its component will also get reduced. And so, what would happen? This drop will be pulled out, all right, in all directions around the circumference. So, that is like this is a this is the textile surface and the drop actually from the top view will be looking like this. It like to spread in all directions. If you reduce what? Reduce the surface tension of liquid or if it is possible for you which you can also do instead of modifying the liquid I want to find the surface of a solid right. So, if I increase the value of gamma S V then also it will spread ok. For example, if I take a surface and I make it more hydrophilic I do whatever I do on the surface and make it more hydrophilic then what happens? I put a drop of water it will spread right. It is just like let us say I have a oil treated fabric and I remove the oil it will become more hydrophilic and then water will spread otherwise not. So, in this case for example, this was a wax treated fabric this was untreated fabric and they behave differently right. So, for wetting what will you do? For wetting you will like to either if possible reduce the surface tension of a liquid which we do every time adding a wetting agent remember wetting agent or do some more surface modification to make the surface hydrophilic that will also attract water all right. Now, remember when we talk about water, we are also talking about water repellency, this is the discussion that is happening. So, the water comes into discussion all the time, is right, but theoretically any liquid, this is true. If suppose I want the reverse, that is what we are calling water repellency. So, what do I do? Water repellency means what? I mean I am walking in the rain and uh, I will want the water to just fall off the garment that is water repellency is right. If I am expecting water repellency what should I do? Change the 
I mean, what are the conditions that can happen? Reverse of this, if you increase this value, gamma LV, then this component will increase and so repellency can increase because it will become obtuse, it will be easy to roll. So that is one interesting thing that when it becomes obtuse, it is going towards more and more repellency. So that is one and the other is reduce this gamma SV. So opposite things have to be done. And now let us say what can we do? Can I reduce the surface tension of water as it is falling on me? I am sure it is difficult. I mean how do you control surface tension? When you are doing a wetting and processing, wet processing, yes I can add a surfactant and reduce the surface tension or do something to increase the surface tension maybe. But that is not possible. So what do we do? So we play with solid surface, we play with this only. And what are we saying? We are saying reduce, reduce gamma SV for less wetting or water repellency. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, it makes some sense, right? Looking at this diagram, it makes sense. So, without worrying, this is what we mean, okay? Go further. So, what we said that will reduce gamma, but how do we reduce gamma? How do we increase gamma SV? So, we have said as far as gamma SV is concerned, we reduce obviously, we will not increase gamma SV because otherwise it will spread. Now the question still arises that what are we doing actually when it is a reduce and increase and what are we doing to the surface? Let us say that there is something called a polarity. I said that you make a hydrophilic surface, then water will obviously get absorbed. If you make a hydrophobic surface, the water will not get absorbed because you said it is hydrophobic by definition. But in terms of surface energy, when you say I am making hydrophilic, somebody say, oh, you have increased the surface energy, therefore it is spreading. If you make hydrophobic, they say you reduce the surface energy from the young Dupre equation. Now, what do you mean by I have reduced? What I am going to do with it? Has some this particular term called polarity has something to do with all these surfaces? So, if somebody asks you when will be this interface, let us say here we are talking about gamma SV will be less because we are interested it to be less. When will it be less? When the surface becomes polar or when the surface becomes non-polar? If this is let us say a tension between two phases, therefore you have an interface, it is a tension. So when the tension will be less? when you add water to water, it just mixes. If you add oil to water, they do not mix. So their interface for example got tension, therefore they do not mix. They want to stay within their own domain, oil into oil and water into water, right? So we are talking about, let us say, when, the so question that remains is, when the interface energy will be less or reduce. It will only happen when both the phases like each other or dislike each other. What is that? So, if you say gamma SV is less, that means the 
interface energy is less and that means both these phases like each other or dislike each other. Right? No? So, if they like each other then the interface energy should be less and why should they like? You remember that? Like dissolves like. So, if two phases are let us say more polar, both are polar then they will like each other and therefore, they will reduce interface energy will reduce. If both of them are non-polar then also interface energy will reduce because they will like to mix, attach, adhere. So, what do we do? Make the surface of textile hydrophilic or hydrophobic to make it water repellent? Hydrophobic because that is does like water that is common sense. So, now we say so hydrophobic surfaces obviously are less polar because they do not like water so much, but they like air I mean they like air does mean air is polar or non polar what is air? Air has been defined as non polar phase. So, if air is non polar, the textile surface also becomes non polar, then they will like each other. So, surface energy will reduce, which means gamma SV will reduce. Would you like to find out yourself as to why air as a phase is more non polar? I think I leave it to you to just check it out. So, there are two more terms that we can talk about work of adhesion and work of cohesion. Now, work of adhesion and cohesion mean that there is a solid surface and liquid surface liquid adheres to the solid. If it adheres to the solid more then it will be more work will be required to separate them because they like each other. If they do not like each other less work will be required to separate them right. So, that is the work how much work do you do to separate these two surfaces. Now, let us say there is a situation. Let us say this is some cylinder cylindrical space that we have which is one unit area therefore, we can talk in terms of energies and uh, this is solid and this is liquid let us say whatever liquid we call it. Now, we want to create a situation where these two have been separated. So, liquid is here and the solid is here. So, you have separated them, you had an interface, you had an interface which was which had an energy of gamma S L okay. And now you have created one if this is separated, so this is vapor. So, you have created another one surface, another surface interface which is gamma S V, and you have created another interface which is gamma L V. Right? So, what do we have now? So, work required to separate let us say work of adhesion which 
we can call as work of addition as let us say we can call this as this or we can also call this as between solid and liquid will be that we have created two surfaces one surface solid and vapor one surface is solid and vapor which we have created which is here so here you have created gamma sv and also you have created gamma lv okay so these two surface energies are now there in surface energies okay and now and what has gone which was earlier was gamma sl so we have created one gamma sv we have created one gamma lv and we have eliminated an interface which was gamma sl this has been eliminated by doing this you have created one surface you create another surface so work of addition is therefore defined as the energy which will be governed by these now of course what is the surface tension of liquid what is surface tension of energy of a solid that will depend if this sv if this gamma sv is very low well then the work will be low easy to remove right if the surface tension of the sl whatever is there is but it is dependent on both the things so that means based on the surface energy you will be able to determine the work if they like each other you have to do more work if they like do not like each other then you will have to do less work something similar we can define as if we have cohesion let us say liquid liquid let us say this is the same kind of a thing and you have a liquid in the thing so theoretically if completely liquid that is an cohesion and therefore there is no interface as such there is no interface all right there is no interface but what are we doing let us say I want to separate them so I have created two situations where this was liquid itself so now I have another liquid column here and another liquid column here and we have created a surface which is gamma lv here energy will be required to create the surface gamma lv again and here imaginary if imaginary we say is gamma ll imaginary so if we write the same equation as ll or work of cohesion will be equal to therefore one gamma lv plus another gamma lv minus gamma Oh, let me write again I wrote something not very good gamma lv and another gamma lv minus gamma ll if you see this this actually is nothing because water if it is water likes itself so this is equal to 0 and therefore this becomes 2 gamma lv so the to separate 
thing, you will have to work so much to separate two liquid and create two surfaces. Is that right? So, now we understand work of addition, work of cohesion and so on and so forth. We would uh, like to stop here uh, only and in the next lecture, we will see how some of the chemicals can be used to create such surfaces and that will lead to water repellency. So, what have we learned? We have learnt about the fundamentals of repellency in which the Young and Dupre equation uh, works for you. If you want the energies to be low of the surface, if you can reduce the surface energy, then you can achieve repellency. If you increase the surface energy of surface, then you will uh, have wetting, more wetting. And in this whole process, we did define what wetting means was a positive wetting, acute angle, negative wetting, obtuse angle in between of course, zero wetting and we did talk about spreading and also we talked about the no wetting situation which practically is non-existent, all right. So, this is all what we covered today. Next time, we will take it up from here, okay. Thank you.